What's going on Workforce? Brian here and today we're talking about Octopath Traveler, set to release on the Nintendo Switch on July 13th, 2018. If you haven't been following this game or you don't know what's going on with the development, there's been a lot of updates that Nintendo has provided for us, so here is a video breaking down everything we know about the game so far. Obviously Octopath Traveler is a 2D, 3D strategy turn-based RPG. So you might be asking yourself, what is 2D, 3D? Well, it's essentially what they call HD 2D, in which that it's kind of like this 16-bit era brought into this kind of 3D effect field. Visually, it's stunning and impressive. And one of the things that everybody really kind of, after seeing this game and seeing how it looks, really wants to see like Final Fantasy VI and all the old Final Fantasies remastered in this style. Same thing with Chrono Trigger. Honestly, I think this would be a great way to really bring out any 16-bit classic game that's in that sprite based visuals. Now visually, while this game is continually new and press, it's got really great gameplay in that it's a turn based RPG. This has been developed by Square Enix and published by Nintendo, so it's actually exclusive to the Nintendo Switch, but the development team has a long history of this, so they're the same team behind Bravery Default, and when we talk about the battle system, you'll start to see similarities brought in. So Octopath Traveler, really what does that stand for? Well we know that there's going to be eight protagonists. Six have already been revealed to us. So we have Hanat, the Hunter, and they have a path action skill Provoke. Therion, the Thief, path action skill Steal. Primrose, the Dancer, she has a Lure. Tressa, the Merchant, who can buy things from villagers. Aflin, the Apothecary, which can inquire from villagers, basically ask questions. And Oberic, the Warrior, who can challenge people to a fight. So this obviously leaves two characters and two jobs remaining. What's really cool about all of this is that this system is going to use the sub job system. So every character has their main job, which I just listed, and then every character can equip a sub job from the available jobs of the eight characters. No word yet if there's any additional jobs out there, but for the most part, this seems to be very complex and this is going to offer a lot of replay value because you can mix and match. Now I did take time to list out the path action skills that each of these characters have. So in the field, you'll be able to interact with various characters and you can choose to use a path action. Now path actions are going to actually be broken up into two categories, noble and rogue. Noble skills are going to allow you to, to be used, but there's going to be conditions. They could be based off your level or how much money you have or various other factors. Now rogue skills, which fall into another category, much like where you think provoke would be a rogue skill and challenge would be its noble equivalent, you can always use rogue skills, but they have a chance to damage your reputation if you fail. So it has this kind of good versus bad. This is also going to play out in the side stories of this game. So side quests are going to be heavily reliant on use of these path action skills. But let's take a moment to jump back into the battle system. So we talked about sub jobs, but now you're also going to have a point boost system. This is prevalent in the demo, which you can go download on Nintendo Switch today. The point based system allows you to store up points and be able to execute or basically increase the effect of your skills in battle. This is very much similar to a Bravery Default style system, even though it's not one to one just like Bravery Default. So you can choose to save up, you can defend, you can build up those points, and then you can execute them multiple times. Now your enemies are going to have this shield with a number system on it, and they're also going to have weaknesses. Using the correct weakness will lower that shield value and put them into a break status, basically render them ineffective to be able to fight. And so this plays out into the strategy of the turn-based system. Basically being able to knock people out uh, from being able to use their turn can really help increase the effect that you have on them. Plus they're also weakened in this state. So when you team up with your other party members, you want to be able to try to strategize on which skills you want to attack which enemies and who you want to knock out first. Enemies aren't going to go down very easily at first, so you're going to have to take a little bit of time either to grind out new levels or to be able to make sure that you're utilizing the correct strategy when fighting certain groups of enemies. Now, since the demo, they've come out and they've released information about what they've already changed. They're adding in a radar. They're, they're fixing various things about the game based off of user feedback. They said that for people who are worried about the challenge, and the demo offers quite the challenge, is that once you really kind of get into that full party, they feel like it's going to offer a lot of people, you know, I guess a little bit less of a challenge or it's just going to help add more to the strategy of it. When you're going one-on-one -on -one versus these bosses, it can be very challenging in the demo. But overall, I think when we see that the full party, I think the balance is going to be there. They brought that up, but hopefully we don't see them easing up on the difficulty. One of the really cool things about this game is the challenge that just normal fights have and allow you to kind of really 
play in that old school fashion way. Now, obviously I'm really excited about Octopath Traveler. If you have a Nintendo Switch, I would highly encourage you to go check out the demo. The demo at this point is almost half a year old and the game is set to come out here in a few months. So there are gonna be some changes that they make to it. And obviously we're still waiting to learn the last two characters and I'm sure they're gonna reveal those probably maybe sometime around E3. July 13th will be here before we know it. And I really cannot wait to get my hands on the full version of this game. It brings back a, a nostalgic factor for me, but it also offers this really interesting way forward for these type of games into the modern era. And like I said before, I would love to see them continue with this art style and this art direction. Hopefully this isn't the last we've seen of it. Hopefully this is a really good new franchise that we can see Nintendo and Square Enix continue to develop on the way forward. But anyway, that's what we know, guys. Let me know in the comments below if I missed anything. If you've got any questions about this game or are you excited about this game, sound off. Obviously, I am. I cannot wait to play. Cannot wait to have that conversation with you guys. But anyway, for work to game my name's Brian. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hope to see you in my next. But until then, I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to check out any other videos, <laughs> you should click over here. <laughs> and then we've got uh, like some kind of vlog thing down here in the corner. <laughs> and then we've got like <laughs> subscribe. Have you get, yeah, like that's really, you should totally do it. This was a complete <laughs> disaster. <laughs>